in I will start um, presenting the aims and scopes of the of the local project. So thank you for uh, being there and for uh, supporting the frantic rhythm of the local project. Uh, it was quite it, it has been quite a journey, as you know. And I see that some of the participants were already with us in the previous sessions. So it's becoming quite a family. I, 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 I even say we, we are, I think we are creating a pop-up community of practice. Uh, and it's, it's very interesting to see how this community of practice uh, emerged and is popping up at different sessions in training weeks in dissemination events as Monica organized last week in Aveiro. And it's, it's, really, it's really a frantic journey, but it's one that makes us stronger. And I think we are working with a lot of commitment in this project and it's, so I would, I would like to thank you all for being here. So I will be, I'll be presenting the master plan uh, of this uh, local project. Uh, local, as you know, stands for Local Linguistic Landscapes for uh, Global Language Education in the school context. And um, I'm coordinating the project for the University of Hamburg, but this is really a joint project with, that is just possible with the support of all the local teams in Spain, the Netherlands, Portugal, and France. So Melinda is, um, is the coordinator of the, uh, the Spanish team. Uh, Joana is the coordinator, Joana Duarte is coordinator of the uh, Groningen team in, in the Netherlands. Monica is, uh, Monica Lorenzo, sorry, I just, I always just say the first names, I don't know why, it's like a family. So Monica Lorenzo is the coordinator of the Portuguese team and Andrea Young, the, the coordinator of the French team. So um, what am I going to present to you? And I hope uh, it won't be that much because as I told you, we are, I feel, I have this feeling I am in a community, so most of you already know uh, what I'm about to present. So I'm just presenting the project goals and principles. I will share some outputs we have um, developed so far, because some of these outputs, as you probably already know, will be uh, the focus of the training week, and we will work more directly with some of them. And I will really just give you a hint of what this project already uh, brought us in terms of preliminary results in the, from a research perspective. I won't enter into details because uh, Lisa Brinkman and Julia von Rosen will present some very detailed accounts of uh, what happened while implementation, implementing the local project at, um, at the secondary school in Hamburg. So I will just really give you some ideas of the positive effects we could notice, but then I will leave the most of the talk on the research aspects um, to Lisa and Julia. So just a first, uh, a first mainstream definition of what it what linguistic landscapes are as you can see from these examples linguistic landscapes are the languages the signs around us um, and as Landry and Burry said in a, in a seminal uh, work in 1997 all languages in a, in public spaces um, in billboards, place names, commercial shop signs, and so forth and so on. More recent um, research has enlarged this perception, and now linguistic landscapes are also uh, analyzed in private spaces, like we, we, we speak nowadays from, of um, own spaces, for example, or food scapes. Uh, and so, uh, so that's, that's a lot of innovation going around this, this concept. So um, linguistic landscapes are multimodal, uh, are multi-semiotic. It's not just about the language. It might be about the sounds. I remember in the, in the dissemination event, 
of being uh, subjected, if you want, to some sounds of Aveiro, and I was immediately emerged in my in in my city. So it was it was really a very sensorial experience. So we speak about soundscapes as well, skinscapes. Uh, in some very recent research, like the tattoos we have, the signs, the languages we 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 embody in our in our bodies and sensecapes um, involving all the kind of uh, sense, uh, senses and sensory experiences uh, around experimenting, experiencing a public or a private space um, by Prada. Um, the, the, the aims uh, of the project are quite straightforward. We want to develop multilingual pedagogies for the school context based on the way students and teachers experience languages in, in, in the in outdoor context, not just in the school, but really in outdoor situations. We want to, to, bridge, to, to bridge the gap between outdoor and indoor uh, language learning situations. This is a collaborative project, an Erasmus Plus, with the partner countries, France, Germany, Netherlands, Portugal, and Spain. And it is a project that was financed for three years um, and ending in August 22. So this year already, how the, the time went on. Um, how does it work? So we want to create uh, situations in which uh, the linguistic landscapes can be brought to the classroom. So from the wild, if you want, uh, to the classroom, um, but also connecting, uh, connecting um, the, the classroom with the, the outdoor environment. So even if our main point is how to work with linguistic landscapes in the classroom, we have some ideas on how to, um, to create dynamics between classroom and the context. So through ethnographic works. Uh, but again, Lisa and uh, Julia will uh, talk, to you, uh, talk to you about this. So we want to uh, somehow, uh, in French, it will it would be didactiser, uh, so transform authentic uh, materials in the wild into classroom um, materials and use it as resources for um, learning languages and learning about languages as well. So we want to create pedagogical materials based on the documentation, analysis, sharing of linguistic landscapes both by teachers and students. What have we done this far? We have several types of, um, of outputs of the project. So we are creating uh, multimodal uh, modules for teaching and learning through linguistic landscapes, sometimes not just through the linguistic landscapes, also really with the linguistic landscapes and in the linguistic landscapes if you are in immersion. We, all, we are also creating, developing, implementing a series of tutorials and podcasts in which we share the knowledge we co-constructed with teachers around the use of linguistic landscapes in educational spaces and in the classroom more specifically. We also developed and are and are applying um, and developing even further uh, uh, an application for mobile learning based on the co-creation of games around the, the exploitation of linguistic landscapes around us. And we will be producing, this is the only guy, the, the only output that is really not, uh, that is not really started, but we also plan to create guidelines for language teachers and curriculum developers in order to give them some ideas about the added value of including linguistic landscapes in teaching and learning, bridging the gap between outdoor and indoor learning situations. So we really want, it's, it, 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 it is not meant to be um, just good practices. 
it's really a kind, kind of um, presenting ideas on um, the added value of introducing these um, resources, these authentic resources. Um, as I told you, we have created already, uh, it's much more than uh, the ones that are listed here. We have created modules for teaching and learning in seven languages. So we are five partner countries, but then we had modules in English and in Frisian, the minority language in the Netherlands. And our aim is really to uh, provide teachers with some ideas on which materials, what kind of tasks they can uh, develop with their students in order to, um, to make the best uh, of this um, authentic resource. Um, so we, we have modules that are connected with idea of sandscapes. Um, they all make use of multimodality. So these, these ideas that I presented you when discussing the, the concept of linguistic landscape. We, also, we are also creating tutorials and podcasts for for our project so we will also count on you for this in the in this training week so tutorials we understand them as as, as videos with suggestions on how to work with the linguistic landscapes based sometimes on teachers needs and dilemmas so one of these tutorials um uh, can be well how am i going to uh to make my students aware of other languages or uh, of, of linguistic landscapes around them. And some tutorials were already created. We have now, uh, sorry, podcasts. We have now nine to uh, podcasts in different languages. We, all, we also have Catalan, uh, Spanish, French, and um, a lot of different languages in our podcasts and also in the tutorial. So one thing you should be aware of is that all our products are multilingual. And um, in order to facilitate also the work with these resources, if you see here, you can download the transcript and you can sometimes even download the translation of this transcript in other languages in order to uh, come up with uh, different kinds of activities if you want to develop them. Uh, in, your, in your country with specific publics. The app, uh, this is the display uh, where you can join us. Um, and the aim of this app is to explore linguistic lands, um, landscapes while playing a multiple choice question mobile game. Uh, you can create it alone, but what really, uh, makes it that enjoyable is that you can co-create games with your students. So you have um, access to a platform where you can uh, create points of interest associated with the linguistic landscapes around you. You can create the questions, the, the options for the answers, and even the feedbacks. So this is a very, a very dynamic um, uh, app. And this app is already available uh, in Google Play and uh, App Store. If you don't have it, this is your chance. <laughs> so you can just download, them, uh, download the app from uh, both these, uh, these stores, Google Play or App Store. Um, and as I told you, I, I'm really very happy to share some of the preliminary results from project implementation in different school sorts, in different uh, levels of scholarity, in different countries. Um, so these are transverse, transversal resu results that we have from the implementation of the project. As you know, even if Erasmus Plus projects are not really about research, we used as a team of very competent, uh, um, um, uh, now I was lying, that's why I missed the words. No, uh, the, in the, in the researchers, we are so competent as researchers, we also collected some data and we really want to, um, to grasp the potentials of this, um, 
of this project. So we, we collected documents, teachers feedbacks, and also students feedbacks through a myriad of, of, of resources, the modules themselves, the app content. Um, we collected written and multimodal multilingual discussions with teachers. Um, we interviewed the teachers that were working with us and they that were uh, willing to give us feedback after modules, the modules implementation. And we also have, and this is very important for us, the students' feedbacks around all the five countries. So we have students' classroom productions, we have classroom interaction, we have classroom observation, we have questionnaires. So now we just need the time to think all this data and come up with a synthesis of what this means to bring linguistic landscapes into the classroom. But let me just tell you, we have a very positive impact so far. So we could, um, we could somehow categorize the positive impact um, from the implementation of the project across different settings, as I told you, around FIA, uh, FIA um, categories. So the development of language awareness or even critical language awareness, we can see throughout the project the reflection about language hierarchies, power issues, cross-linguistic comparison, and so on. And even if our project was thought to have a positive impact um, into children and students' representations, our, our analysis um, also shows that this project has positive effect, effects um, into uh, teachers' um, representations and how they think of their roles about um, teachers using uh, multilingual pedagogy. So the positive impact that we have measured so far in very qualitative terms is really valid for teachers and students alike. Um, we can also observe a sense of empowerment from the side of the of the pupils and students enrolled in the in the project. Students that start valuing other languages and cultures and that speak about integration and 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 opening up the school to more equity in education. We see um, the 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 positive effect on the school and community interaction, on the value that, um, that is attached to um, building more sustainable communities, just to bring a, a term that was focused on in Aveiro uh, dissemination event, more sustainable educational communities. The, the, the way, for example, in Strasbourg, the, the dialogue across generations were fostered by bringing linguistic landscapes to the classroom. So this is another, another positive um, effect we could observe this far. And also, for example, in Groningen, but we also had some, some, some hints of this language activism in Hamburg, and I think in Aveir we also saw it, that students start thinking of the, of the construction of their linguistic communities as more uh, fairer or as fairer and more inclusive. So they start thinking of transforming the way the languages are displayed in the landscape in order to include more languages, um, more minority languages, um, the language of migrant populations and so forth and so on. So, um, we see how students are willing to uh, participate in the construction of a more inclusive community. So um, just to wrap up, we saw that through the, the, the inclusion of linguistic landscapes in our pedagogies, um, we saw how this very authentic pedagogical and also multilingual resource um, can be used to develop uh, transversal competences such as language awareness, uh, critical language awareness, critical literacy skills, um, intercultural competences, competences as well in the target language um, 
through, for example, incidental learning of uh, new words through the contact with the linguistic landscape. So we saw that this multimodal transposition has an added value at several levels, both in the target language and in developing um, uh, transversal competences. Um, and importantly, we saw uh, or we see in this project that the linguistic landscapes are a resource that are available to all. And even if we think of linguistic landscapes as just present in um, hyper diverse contexts in urban areas um, and uh, around big cities, we can see that students that are situated in peri-urban or, peri or rural areas, they can also um, use linguistic landscapes. They, may, they might start differently, like having a contact with their own scapes and then discover the, the, the other linguistic landscapes. But we see that linguistic landscapes are almost uh, democratic resources. They are available to all. And we could see that, multi, that, that linguistic landscapes also help disseminate implementing and implementing multilingual and intercultural pedagogies. Um, I forgot to add to this synthesis that the, the positive added value of integrated linguistic landscapes, as I told you, is that they are important for students and for teachers alike. And we could have, uh, we have a lot of positive feedback from teachers participating with this, um, with our working with us with the, within the local project and implementing these resources. So this is what I wanted to tell you about the local project. If you want to know more, you already know how to find us. So just browse our uh, homepage, localproject.au, um, or um, the local project on the YouTube, where we have um, a channel full of multimodal resources. Thank you so much for your attention. And if you want to know a lot more of linguistic landscapes, please uh, just read about this as much as you want. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sylvia. Um, as I said, I'm going to put, I'm going to stop recording.